Welcome to Let's Play Sid Meier's Civilization 3 Play the World, Episode 2. And here we'll be getting into the actual game itself. Now you begin with just two people, a settler and a worker. Now, the time frame is 4000 BC. We've pretty much come out of the Stone Age. We have first started to um, set down roots because before this we've become nomadic. Now as you can see we have two free texts, alphabet and ceremonial burial, which become helpful because you can trade them with other people once we meet them. Now show you a little bit of the window. We have the main menu, the Cyclopedia, has some pretty interesting information. Our advisors. There's our map. As you can see only a little bit, a small dot of the map is known. All the rest is black until we explore it, or buy a map from somebody. Now we have our unit. These we probably don't have to worry about until later. And there we have a settler and a worker. And it gives you some information. Now there's going to be a lot of information, and I'm going to reveal it on a as-needed basis as to not overwhelm. Now we will build our city. It lets you name it whatever you want. It suggests a name for you, but since I can't think of any names, I'm just going to call it the auto name, which is Delhi. And you can see, as soon as we founded it, we now know more of the map. Now, there's a lot of information on this screen, too, um, but uh, we'll get into that a bit later. For now, this is what we are building. Each city can build one thing at a time, so I'm going to start with a warrior for defense of the city. It's always important to have your cities guarded because barbarians are always lurking around and they will pillage your city, destroy improvements, and they will steal your money. So as you can see we have um, different terrain types here. Now with our worker he will improve the land so that it is more useful to us. Um, it's pretty helpful. There's an automate mode now we get to um, decide what text we want to research. Now here is the text tree. As you can see you need certain texts to get to certain other texts. There are four eras. Uh, I showed you two right here. We're in ancient times now. I can choose basically anything that doesn't have a prerequisite. So I'm just going to go with bronze working for now. And here is the main domestic advisor menu. I'm going to increase my scientific budget from 50% of the treasury to 80% so that um, we may learn discoveries faster. The consequence is we're only going to be adding one gold to the treasury instead of two every turn. Okay, as you can see this is a turn-based game and you have to press a little button or spacebar for it to continue. Alright, there's our warrior. As you can see, he has stats, attack, defense and movement. One of one means he still has one movement of one possible left. We can send him somewhere to explore. We can um, fortify him to protect the city. We can have him simply wait. But I'm going to have him explore. There's not too much danger in the city being attacked and we're creating another warrior right now. Okay, this guy I'm just going to have defend the city because pretty soon I'm going to need him for another purpose. Now I'm going to build a settler next. The name of the game, at least early on, is Exploration and Settlement. So you want to build a settler as soon as you possibly can. Now as you might notice the numbers there are the number of turns it takes for a city to grow and the number of turns it takes for the unit to be produced. Now a settler will take away two citizens. That's what the number on the left means, how many citizens there are. So you have to have at least a population of three citizens in order for um, a settler to be produced. Now I'm going to take both of them, move them together in a stack because the settler is defenseless. We don't want him to be killed by a barbarian, so he's going to travel with this warrior. Now, um, and you might wonder, what is that? 
on our right. Oh, by the way, we have discovered bronze working. We can choose where we want to go next, but I'm going to go with the default. Anyway, that item over there, you might wonder what it is. It is a goodie hut. It is a surprise. It could be gold, it could be tech, or it could be a barbarian encampment. So we're going to send this guy over to investigate. And as you notice, our other warrior is exploring automatically. There's a lot of jungle there. Oh, this, um, this tribe has taught us pottery, which is going to be very helpful because we don't have to research that ourselves, and we can possibly trade with another civilization. All right, a spearman is a slightly more advanced unit. It's a defensive unit, as you can see. The two is its defensive stat. It's twice as powerful on defense as the warrior, but it's just about equal offense. Now I'm going to have him fortify. Okay, now we are settling our new city. This is a good location. Rivers are good places to settle, and coasts. I'll explain later, but we're going to be wanting to raise a navy later on, and it's good to have coastal cities for that purpose. Now we're going to start with a temple in this. Now temples um, are good for culture. By the way, we have our palace here. Um, some, when you pass certain milestones, they let you expand your palace. Now when you start, your palace is kind of crummy. I mean, look at that. Some, some palace, right? But you have um, five different choices for styles based on the group. We have the Asian group because we are India, after all. So, we'll see that grow as the game progresses. Oh, there's another goodie hut. Let's see what's there. By the way, we have our spearman, and since I know we're going to have a population of three citizens before um, the settlers finish, I'm going to start production on the settler now. Oh no, it's barbarians. See if any of them attack us. Oh, first combat. They attack me, they've gotten damage to me, but we kill them. As you can see, he now has only two out of three hit points. I could attack that guy and probably win, but I'm not going to. I'm, I would rather fortify him and have him regain his strength. Okay, we discovered that tech. And now, his strength is fully refurbished, and we're going to have him explore some more. Alright. Oh, and by the way, this is a list of... They make these lists every once in a while, but the main point here is we can see our adversaries. We now know who we're up against. And I know from experience that the Chinese are most likely going to be our biggest pain in the butts. Okay, well that just about wraps it up for this video. I hope you'll be back for part three. Um, see you then.